talk about another part of your life. Um, when you were younger, you were, if not an atheist, an agnostic. Mm -hmm. How did you transform yourself from being either an atheist or agnostic to somebody who's a committed Christian? It does seem like an odd story, doesn't it? Well, growing up on the farm, my parents were not opposed to religion. They just didn't think it was particularly relevant. So I had no religious background. Got to college, you know, those conversations in the dorm about what do people believe, and I didn't think I believed in any of it. So I was an agnostic, but I, by the time I got to graduate school, I was shifting even more to being an atheist, and I would not be too comfortable keeping quiet if somebody was talking about the supernatural because it was all about you know, nature and how you study it and how you describe it. And then I went to medical school. And that third year of medical school where you're thrust out onto the wards and you're sitting at the bedside of wonderful people uh, whose lives are under threat and many of whom are not gonna survive. And you really start to realize that your own thinking about life and death has been pretty unsophisticated uh, compared to the reality of what these people are facing. And I realized that I was a scientist. I was supposed to make decisions about really important questions based on evidence, and I'd never really considered whether there might be evidence supporting the idea that there really is a God. I just assumed the answer was no. And that was a bit unsettling, but it seemed like something that I shouldn't ignore. So I began sort of asking those people I knew who were believers, how can you do this without checking your brain at the church door? Because isn't this just a, a perfect example of irrationality? And they told me, well, actually, no, there's a pretty profound rational basis for faith. You might try uh, reading C.S. Lewis for starters. I'd never really heard much about C.S. Lewis. But picking up some of the things he'd written, particularly Mere Christianity, made it clear to me, oh my gosh, there's an incredibly compelling intellectual rational basis for faith, which I had totally missed and assumed didn't exist. It took me a couple of years mm -hmm. of fighting against that, trying to prove that this was all wrong and that I could stick with my agnosticism. But ultimately, I realized I couldn't, that it was so compelling. And then I had to figure out, okay, which of the ways of understanding God is going to be the one that I can make the most sense out of? And after many considerations of various faith traditions, ultimately the person of Jesus appealed to me in a remarkable way as a historical figure, not a myth, who had answers to questions that I really needed answers for and whose life right. and death and resurrection seemed to be remarkably well documented. So your view would be, for example, what's in the Bible is um, allegorical. It's not to be mm -hmm. taken as uh, absolute fact. In other words, the Bible would say that maybe the earth is a couple thousand years old. Scientists would say it's you know much older, five billion years old. How do you reconcile those two different strands so, of thought? And it is, the case that a lot of people now are tripped up uh, by what they uh, interpret as a conflict between a literal interpretation of Genesis 1 and 2 and what science teaches us very convincingly about the age of the universe, almost 14 billion years, and the age of the earth, almost 5 billion years. But you know what? That idea that there's a conflict is a fairly recent arrival on the scene. Uh, go back and read St. Augustine in 400 AD, who was obsessed with trying to figure out what is Genesis really telling us about origins. Uh, he would have been the first to say that this literal interpretation of 24-hour days is absolutely unjustified based upon the original language and the way in which the audience for the original uh, Genesis 1 and 2 stories would have interpreted it. And somehow we, particularly in the United States, over the course of the last 150 years, have taken something that clearly was in written in a way that had a lot of ambiguity and insisted that it had just one possible interpretation. So yeah, I wrote a book about a lot of this sort of per perceived conflict, because for me, there really has never been one between what I know as a scientist, where if you're gonna ask me a question about nature, science is gonna be the way to get the answer, but also somebody who's interested in questions that science can't answer, like well, is there a God and why am I here? 